I want to show you how I generate TLS certificates with Cloudflare's SSL tool. It's a great little tool, but when you first get started with it, it's not that easy to work out how you should get going. So we're going to do the simplest example we can just to get us familiar with the tool, which is to build a root certificate, a CA, and then sign a single server certificate from that. So I've already installed the tool and you can see it has quite a few options. The best way to start is with this print defaults that will get us going with some good default configuration. So let's try that out. And it tells us we're using it wrong. So let's ask for the help. And it gives us this hint that we want to call it with a type and that we can list the types if we don't know what they are. So let's do that. And it tells us we can ask for config or CSR. So let's start with config. And this is giving us back default config that we can specify in a file rather than providing it as a CLI argument every time we use this tool. So it's giving us some defaults that we don't really care too much about. And then it's giving us some profiles that we can use for www, which is a server certificate or client certificates. And it's telling us how long the certificates will live for and also what they're allowed to be used for. So this is not too important for us, um, especially initially, we're not gonna care about this, but if you were doing something like TLS mutual authentication or if you're doing some other kind of encryption with this, you might care about setting some of these key usages. So let's save that to a file. We're going to need it later. And then let's look at the other option that we have on print defaults, which is CSR. CSR stands for certificate signing request. So it's the inputs that we'll use when we actually generate certificates. So it's letting us set common name, which is the friendly identifier. If you were to go to your browser and have a look at the certificates that are being used on a website that's using HTTPS, this is the name you'll see for it. Usually like, like a company name or something like that. Then the hosts is where that website's actually being served or where your content's being served. So if you didn't have www.example.net in your config and your host config, and then you tried to serve your website on that domain, it won't work. Your browser will reject it because there's a mismatch there so that you can't use someone else's certificate on your website, other people can't use your certificate on their website. Then it lets us configure the key. That's just how the, the, the secret key will be generated. And a little bit of information about who you are. So people can have an idea what country you're based in, what state and um, locality. So this is looking good. We don't need to change too much. We will make a few tweaks to this, but let's save a copy of this default output as cacsr.json. So the configuration for our root certificate and we'll save another copy as the server config. Let's go and give those some tweaks before we generate certificates. Right, let's tweak these configuration files for our scenario. So I'm going to rename this www in the config to server because I think it makes more sense. And then in the CA configuration, I'm going to get rid of the hosts. We won't be serving up anything with the root certificates. We don't need hosts and I'll leave the common name at example.net. I'm also going to swap out from ECDSA to RSA. It's easier to work with because more tools understand it. It's been around for a long time, but there are definitely advantages to the other. It's worth going and having a look if you're interested. So I'm going to set this to 2048 bytes for RSA. So that's the size of the key in bits or bytes. You can go as high or as low as you want. If you go low, the key is weaker. If you go high, the key is stronger, but it takes more time to encrypt and decrypt data. So you'll find usually something like 1024 or 2048 bytes, a multiple of two. And if you're somewhere like a bank, you might see 4096, but anything higher than that's unusual. And then we'll leave the names alone. And then in the server, I'm gonna get rid of the host we don't want and set this up as a server certificate that's on www.example.net. Again, I'm gonna to switch to RSA with 2048 bytes, and then we're ready to generate certs. So let's jump back to the terminal and do that. This is a two-step process. So the first thing we want to do is generate the root certificate. We do that with the gen cert command and we tell it we want a CA and we provide the CSR config that we just wrote. Note that the CA CSR doesn't actually know it's a CA. We've called the file that, but without this init CA, the tool won't know to generate a root certificate and sign it. And then we pass the output through this cfssl json command so that's going to split out the output, which will be in JSON, into files. So let's just see the first part of the output first. So that generates some certs, and you can see this is JSON. So you've got a key here, 
and a key here for the field names. We don't want to work with it in this format. It's much easier as a file. So let's run it like that. And then we can see what that did. So it's created a CACSR and then two files that we wanted. So the CAPEM and the CA.key, CAKey.pem. So that's our public CA certificate and private CA key. We can then use those to generate the server certificate using this command. So quite a lot going on here. Similar again, we're going to use the gencert command and we have to tell it what the root certificate is. So what certificate will sign this server certificate. We provide our config. So this is going to set up the key usages, the lifetime of the certificate. Then we set a profile from that config, which will be server. And then finally, we provide the server.json, which is our certificate signing request for the server certificate. And then again, we pass it through the CFSSL JSON tool to split it into files. So let's run that. And now we should have a server signing request, a server PEM, and a server key. And that is it. We're ready to use these. I think the last thing we should do is have a look at what's inside these files with OpenSSL. So I'm going to switch into a Linux container, and then we'll have a look at that. All right, I've jumped into a Ubuntu container, and I've installed OpenSSL and mounted the certificates we were just working with. So everything that we just had is here. And now we can use the OpenSSL tool to have a look at the contents of the CA certificate first. So X509, that's the format for the certificate. Don't print the certificate. We want our output as text, and the input is ca.pem. So this is one of those incantations that's worth remembering. Not easy to guess if you start looking at the OpenSSL tool, but it's a useful way to look inside a certificate. So that gives us back a bunch of information about the certificate itself. Most of it we don't care about right now. The main thing is this here, the subject. So that's the information we had in our csr.json, including the common name for the certificate. And also down here, under basic constraints, is set CA to true. So this is allowed to be used as a root certificate. So the Cloudflare SSL tool has done what we expected when we asked for a root certificate, which is ACE. Let's have a look at the server certificate as well. And similarly with this, we don't care about most of the output, but we see the subject here. He's using our www.example.net as the common name. And it's been issued by the certificate we saw above. So US, California, San Francisco, common name example.net. That's our root certificate. And then down here, we see CA false. This is not a root certificate. This is designed to be used as a web server authentication tool. So if you're hosting web content, that's what this type of certificate is for. And it's also got a DNS name set. So people will expect this certificate to be used on www.example.net. And the last thing I want to do is have a look at checking that the signing of this certificate is valid, which we can do with the OpenSSL verify command. We'll tell it what the CA is with CA file. And then we'll provide it the server.pem as the file to check. And it tells us it's good. So we've got a valid certificate that's been signed by the root certificate. So anybody who trusts that root certificate, who installs it on their computer or puts it in their keychain on macOS, will be able to use a website that has that server certificate. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is useful to you.